Welcome to It's Time for Microsoft to Step Up Their App Security Game. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, the topic for today's video is app security. And um, we all know this because we experience this all the time on our phones. We, we install an app, um, and th this might be a innocent fart playing app or a weather report app or something. And then you got a dialogue saying, well, this app requests access to your contacts and your phone numbers and your files and stuff like that. Huh, maybe a app that is showing the, the weather report should not have access to my contacts. Uh, that is app security. And um, when you have a platform um, like the uh, the Google App Store or the Play Store or App Source. Well, you as the consumer of an app does not necessarily know every single publisher. You don't necessarily trust everybody. Um, and when it comes to Business Central, we have let's call it uh, sensitive data. We have potentially information that is interesting for certain parties to tamper with, to do something, and um, maybe we don't want them to. So let, let me let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. So here is AppSource. And maybe I'm, um, so, oh, I, I just exchange rates. So I'm gonna, I'm going to do a search for exchange rates. And the first hit is an app called automatic exchange rates. So I take a look at that and uh, well, it, I'm not interested in giving feedback. It's made by somebody called Hogart. I have no idea who that is. Uh, there's no stars, but an easy way to get exchange rates and it's free. You know, I'm going to install that app. Um, and I have installed the app here. It's somewhere. This, so I can go to, you know, go to exchange rates. Um, actually, I'm gonna go to currencies. That's way better. I have my currencies, and from here, I think it's called something with open. Get from openrates.io. So this is great. So. Compare this to the app you have installed on your phone. The first time you click on something, um, the app is running. So I'm doing the same thing here. I am gonna click on get from open rates IO. Oops, now I'm getting a dialogue here that you haven't seen before because this is something that I have created kind of as a proof of concept on what I'm talking about. You see, automatic exchange rates is requesting permission to modify data in the vendor bank account table. Only allow if you don't trust Hogarth. So now I have a dialogue that always allow, allow this session or don't allow, just like on your phone. Um, and now you can say, okay, maybe I'll, I'll allow this. Um, and then you got some exchange rates, uh, but Let's take a look at the vendors. I can't remember if we have a direct now. Let's go to the vendors. And in a moment, we go to bank accounts on this vendor. And if I go in and look at this bank account, we can see that the bank account number is now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe I should have started by showing that it was not that. So what happened here was that for, and, and we'll discuss that in a minute, but let's take a look at the this app that we're running. Um, this part, so somehow, this app has decided that it will find a vendor bank account and, you know, then insert the bank account of the, the 
whoever, whomever is evil uh, here. Uh, so the next time this customer is uh, are running their pay vendors, they might actually generate a, a EFT file to someone and, and sending the money somewhere. They're not supposed to send it. Uh, so how would you know if you download a innocent looking app from app source that this app happened to do something crazy like that evil um crazy is, is actually something else but in this case evil uh and 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 my point here is that it's we have so many apps now on app source there are so many publishers that you might say, oh, this is Hogarth. I know that's a crazy guy on YouTube. Uh, I know him. I know where he lives and I know his stock and stuff like that. So I trust his app. But you might not know everybody. And actually to make this even worse, you, you might not trust me. Uh, not that I'm saying I'm going to steal your money uh, through some evil code. I'm not. But let, let's talk for a second about what it is that you're getting. So you're getting an app that I have published to App Source. I have actually digitally signed the app that I'm sending up there. But, and this is the, my first point here against, not against, but to Microsoft that I think there's room for improvement is that they only verify that it's a signed app. They don't verify who's signed by. So potentially if somebody hacks my Microsoft account, they can actually upload a new version of this app even without having my digital, uh, digital certificates for signing the app. They can just sign it with a random, um, uh, random code sign uh, certificate and Microsoft is saying, oh, it's signed, it's good. But maybe we need to opt that game and say, okay, if if Eric, as a publisher, he's using this certificate, and I have told Microsoft this is the certificate I'm using, or whatever, or the name has to match, or something like that. I think we need that. Um, then let me detour for a second here. And, and if you remember a... Um, I can't even remember when this was. Well, time is a blur. Anyway, yeah, late uh, late uh, 19, early 20, we had the solar winds hack just because of, before COVID happened. And the solar winds hack, or well, solar winds Orion is a, a network management tool. And what the hackers did, that they got access to solar winds. They got access to SolarWinds repository or the GitHub or the TFF server, whatever it is. They injected code into SolarWinds. Like, no, evil code inserted right here. Um, and SolarWinds happily, you know, went on with the business and uh, they had the pipeline building the, the tool and everything looked right. So, you know, it was digitally signed. Everything looked correctly from a end user perspective, but because the hackers had injected code into the, uh, the, the source uh, control system, um, it was a digitally signed hack um, that happened. So at this point, this is what, the, what you saw uh, was running, meaning that we are supposed to get some, you know, get some exchange rates, but instead we were just modifying a vendor bank account. Um, and I just, the exit here is just to make it, you know, so we didn't have to wait for our exchange rates while we were playing with this. Um, and how do you, how do you catch this, something like this? Well, my um, suggestion or, or this little prototype. So I, I created an, uh, an app um, here 
and and this is only this will ever only be a proof of concept because we're doing stuff that won't really work in the real life so the bc threat uh, protection so what i had is is that actually we can now see that if we have a list of tables here and if i go down to 288 you know we can see that huh we have allowed one app to um to use this one and we can see that we have allowed a lot uh, automatic exchange rate to use this one uh, so we could we could revoke that and then we could actually try again and say get from open rates and we'll get the the dollar again so again this time we won't allow and execution is about due to security violation um so that is and, and the way the, the way this app is is working is that it has a built-in list of all sensitive tables i've decided these are the tables that we should really worry about um but in reality what we need and this, now I'm, I'm getting to my, my second ask for i i think what's necessary um and i'm, I'm gonna do a new detour here uh, so this is this is Visual Studio, the, the big one, and they, it doesn't scale well on my screen, so bear with me. But this is this is a game. Um, anyway, but this is a universal Windows application. Uh, the new hated Windows app uh, method. And one of the things that, because this was... Uh, apps running in this system were kind of protected were in 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 a little sandbox by themselves it did not have access to stuff unless you ask for it and and an app here has a manifest and the manifest is telling that okay this uh, lots of other stuff but we're interested in two things here the first one is that we can assign capabilities to this app and you can see in this case my little game here has access to the internet i forgot what for but it, nonetheless it, it will have access to networking right um only as a client it also have access to the user account information so whenever you score high score and get on high score list you will have it will take the name of the, the logged in user and, and put that in high score it doesn't have access to phone calls it doesn't have access to contacts or bluetooth or anything else because it's not on the manifest so with the manifest in place you can upfront say okay i can look in this app i can look at what capabilities are this app asking for and and think about what we just did with tables so imagine that you download an app and you can see okay this app is requesting access to these resources in BC. Uh, and it, it not necessarily only tables, it could also be, you know, emailing. What 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 if uh, what if you download an app and it then spends time on, on spam emailing from your account? Uh, or it's mining bitcoins or whatever it's doing. Um, it may, you know, capability to run background threats, uh, background sessions, uh, probably the proper term here. Um, so you, I think we need a manifest that is when, when, whenever either that you create a manifest or just like we kind of had with permissions, uh, on the pre version 18 version where you could generate what this app is actually doing but but those were were strange and um, the other thing that this one also is doing apart from the capability is that it declares so let's say that this app you know, it's a game so it doesn't really do anything but let's say we want to associate this with a file type so so again the app is declaring that okay I'm associated with a file type or I'm associated with, uh, let's see, search, or I'm uh, I'm associated with 
uh, background tasks here, for instance. So I say, I'm okay, I'm actually doing background tasks, and, and there are different, in Windows, there are different types of background tasks. But again, that the app up front will declare that, hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, another example, if you go back into the, uh, the, the hacked version here with the evil code, think about something like this. Oh, I don't know why there's a backlash, but you know, why would a exchange rate updater request access to insert and modify uh, customer ledger entries? There's no point in, in doing any of this. So, but it's kind of saying, okay, this, this object needs permission and has permission to something that otherwise is not permissible for a normal user. Um, even though they might have user access to it, unless the object actually gives access to those sensitive tables, um, there's no way. So, so again, this could be part of the manifest declaring that, okay, this app is potentially going to do something to a certain table. Uh, it's asking permissions to be allowed to do this. Uh, so an app from manifest saying, this is what it's doing. So now my second uh, ask. The, uh, the the last part of this is actually what I started by sh showing you, is that, um, I can't remember if I allowed or denied it the last time, let's see. And that we get some something like this, where it's sort of saying, okay, so this is actually doing this, because again, you install an app and then you get an update of the app and, and you install an app, it works great, and then the app somehow gets evil, and uh, you start this start happening. Uh, so, so the fact that now it's suddenly requesting something that it never requested before was not allowed before, um, and and I, I think that's that's the third component in in this chain of thought here. Um, but I, I want to I want to mention something else, uh, and now I'm choosing Valdo as an example because he's a really nice guy and is as far away from evil as you can be. But imagine, anyhow, imagine that you're using Valdo's AL ops for uh, for your pipeline. So. What is the pipeline doing? Well, the pipeline is manipulating, getting source code from repository and building apps and doing stuff. So if there were ill intent, or if Waldo's repository were, were uh, hit by something like the solar winds, well, then it will be very, very easy for, for Waldo to, Waldo, very easy for AL ops, uh, to inject code into uh, uh, the, the source of an app just before compiling it. But that code is never even getting into the source control because it's just temporary while the app is compiling. So you have the potential of the app actually being manipulated in the pipeline. And, and now I, I, I chose Waldo as an example. It could also be be Freddy, uh, that what if you get somehow you get a a bad version of BC container helper into your into your system that has Ill has evil code in it and and suddenly that one uh, can inject stuff because it's also used in the pipelines. Uh, so there's lots of ways that you know stuff like this if there is intent can get into the app and I and and I know this is this is just a mad ramble but it's really something that ha I have been thinking a lot about and, and I think we need to uh, adjust to the reality that the infancy of uh, app source is going away and, and the time for fart apps and and just fun and games are done. So we got 
so many system the customers running on on business central and are relying on the app platform being trustworthy the apps being exactly what they tell and right now it's all in the hands of whoever publishes uh, there's the customer has no way of knowing anything about the apps on the, on before they try them uh, and i i th- I think there's a lot of room for improvement and and making the platform even more trustworthy than it already is. Uh, and and now Microsoft says, Eric, you're just uh, fear mongering and stuff like that. But we are dealing with potential sensitive, very sensitive stuff, and we don't want a headline saying that hey, somebody stole tons of money from a, a Microsoft Business Central customers because they hacked the ETF uh, functionality by you know so installing a exchange rate app from from App Source, and now suddenly when they did EFT, they send all the money to uh, to the Cayman Islands or whatever it is. Um, and um, yeah, uh, so I, I I do hope that this video is received in uh, with the intent that it was thought from from me that this is this is a me saying that I th- I think we need to improve this. Um, the app I created is is fun. Uh, but it, it's kind of funky. Uh, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just create something on, on App Source um, uh, and and put this as an app. But it's it's really really a hack. I, I can hear the video is done. Now we're just showing bonus material. Uh, if you want to see how this was actually done, um, here is the the app. And um, right now the app is. Subscribing to uh, on database, uh, delete on database, modify on database, insert. We rename. Forget that. This is just a pro, just a prototype, right? Um, so whenever we do something like that, we call a verify command. And uh, where's that? That is right here. Um, so the this code unit has a, uh, a dictionary called special permissions tables which is an uh, index is an integer and then there's payload is a text because we still need, cannot create dictionaries with dictionaries as the value. I can live with that. Um, so if this is a table that, so what, what I did was that I decided that there's, a, we don't wanna, um, yeah, at least in this process, we don't wanna, monitor everything so so i i decided that we want to monitor deal account your entry customer ledger entry window ledger entries all these tables which are basically well item that's my well, anyway um you know posted data ledger entries and, and stuff like that and of course the bank information um so so this dictionary is built and then it's saying that hey if if this is table that we're looking at and if we have no so so that there is again prototype so it doesn't really look to see if uh, uh oh forget about that that's really matter but but we will we will figure out what it is and then we'll ask the um the question to up here is requesting permission blah 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 blah, blah and we have allowed allow the session don't allow and if we allow permanent we insert into isolated storage so every information on this one is stored in isolated storage to avoid another app subscribing to events on on this one to to get information um but the true hack is that we need to figure out what app is actually doing the call uh so so we have a modified so we we are up here in you know on database modify and how do we know what app is actually modifying well we don't but if we see i have a function called get call stack here so that's down here and 
this is ugly. Sorry, but but it actually actually kind of worked. So what I have here is uh, I have a try function called fake error that throws an error. Uh, so I call this and it throws an error. So this is always false. But as soon as I have an error, I can actually get the last error call stack. Um, and since I know where I am myself in the call stack, I can go back up and say that entry number eight in the call stack, because the try function is at the bottom and then the get call stack is on top and verify is on top of that. And then uh, the, the triggers are, uh, I think there's three entries for, the, for, for the, the trigger in the call stack. And so above that is the the host of the the, the modifier, the insert, and um, so I can get that. And then it's only a matter of you know using the split function to uh, get the, the the app name and the publisher name uh, out of that, and then find the app. Um, but this is freaking slow. Uh, the, the try function is slow and you know getting looking up the apps uh, uh, so so this will, will never work in real life but all this is information that Microsoft has available so it's it's f for them to add this check it's a minor thing because they already have the information um, available but I, I need to produce it so with, with that, I know the, the app that is uh, calling and um, I can ask the question and otherwise that. And then, you know, there is, I, I added in, oh, we need to actually do this again. So I, I allow this and, and then this one is actually this list is is running on the just the object table and then it's looking into isolated storage to locate uh, where there might be something on a specific table and then it goes through the all the goods that are saved in isolated storage to figure out that okay this is the one that's allowed on this table um, so Simple, uh, not useful, well, not usable in, in because the only way we can get the call stack is actually by creating an error. Uh, if we had just get call stack, uh, then we would be closer, and you know, getting the app from from that information could be cached, and there's lots lots of ways this could be handled way better than I'm doing right now. But uh, hey, prototype, uh, it's a hack. What's the name of the channel I guess anyway that's that's it for this uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about this am I totally paranoid and and you believe that anybody in the channel can be trusted and all the tools and all the the build pipelines everything is totally trustworthy or or maybe not. Anyway, <laughs> let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.